Okay guys, welcome back. Um, bit of an update on the 24 I suppose, bit of a chat. Um, things I've found, um, things I've struggled with over the last year and um, what I'm looking forward to, um, to doing. There's a luxury to just go to. Sit here and play with it all day, although you fucking got to, don't you? Because it's raining all the time. So, anyway, um, the 24 inch Dob, how's it going? Um, I'm really, really happy with um, uh, how it went last year. We could have had some better days, but um, um, it's always troubling. Like with uh, a new piece of equipment, you always find those little niggles and, and stuff like that and learn them. So, the 16, you can see over there, is, um, I know it inside out now, I know its capabilities, what it can do. Um, and when you get such a, a big scope, big piece of glass, you learn pretty quickly about um, how to best use it. Um, whether it be using a fan to cool it. Um, we had our winter uh, nights, and while they don't get that really cold like they don't go below zero here where i am probably three to four degrees is about the coolest it sort of gets um, we can have some pretty large um, dips in temperature and you've really got a like a big piece of glass as efficient as it is because it is that two layered with air in between it piece of glass so it really does um, cool quicker than one big thick lump of glass it's still you cannot Get around physics like it still takes time to cool so um, one of the things i was doing in the middle of winter was um, just blowing a normal fan on it um, to try and maintain that swing because i found in the in the peak of winter it really always did perform exceptionally um, after that hard swing you know 10 degrees over a couple of hours sort of thing like it was you're sort of chasing that tail. Um, but now I sort of understand that a bit more and I know that um, I'll definitely um, be including the uh, the little things we can do to make things better. So um, that was one thing. Unfortunately, as the weather warmed up throughout the year, then um, the, the clouds rolled in. I think everyone sort of had a pretty shit year as far as clouds and conditions it was just amazing so like it just it never seemed to end although we did have really really nice days some some wonderful superb days and and warm days but on those days and in the afternoon uh, the the clouds had just rolled in the thunderstorms in the in the late arvo so that was really really good um the the weather if nothing else one of the other things we learned is you really have to be vigilant with your collimation on these things um, F3.3 and some of the new videos you've seen um, with the Air Nexus camera corrector from Star Arizona. I mean, I'd really just use a planetary camera and that. Uh, it's also a 0.75 reducer, which turns this F3.3 into an F2.55. So you really got to be on your game, on your collimation. This holds it quite well, but if I've got a night of imaging, I do prefer if I go from satin to at like 55 or 60 degrees this year or something like that, which is still very, very good, um, down to Jupiter, which is below 40 this year, I'll probably move the scope and I'll just recheck the collimation, give it a touch up if need be, and then we'll, we'll go again because at nine and a half thousand millimeters, it really does make a bit of a difference. Um, the back deck I built out there this year, um, we, it was in a, a great spot and i um, very happy, you know, like got somewhere to put your scope, but we worked out after a little while that even though like I drove big massive posts into the ground, um, nice and solid, um, uh, timber floor and everything was strung together really, really good. There is still a residence resonance on the deck you cannot see it when you're visually 
um, looking through the eyepiece, you just cannot notice it because it's like, I think we're 2060 millimeters of focal length. But when you're out at nine and a half or 8,000 millimeters, when it is looking directly due east, which happens to be where it's pointing now, um, it only uses the altitude bearing. But when it starts slewing from east to west, because it's just a big unit, and there is naturally, you don't see it, there is naturally a stick and a go, or it might be the stepper motors, but it's very, very fine. It was building up a resonance in the deck. So at some stage um, throughout the night when it was in a particular position, but it was always when it was going from east to west on a target, maybe Jupiter was north and so I'd notice a resonance on the screen and it would only move five pixels, but it was a constant resonance. It was not there when we were going from east. So I thought it could have been power supplies and, and stuff like that. Did I have the right one? Did I, what was I doing? Was, is there something else I could do? So I spoke to Tong at Hubble Optics. He's very helpful. He put me onto a different power supply, which is the one that's running now. It's, um, it's currently tracking now um, and I put that on there and there was no real change and then due to um, the circumstances where I need to be in the backyard to um, image I thought bugger it um, I just set up on the concrete where I originally set up um, like three or four weeks after I got the scope and you'll remember those photos. I'll try and dig one out and put one up on the screen there. I set up like it's in an unlikely spot right at the edge of the pool. I might go for a bit of a swim late on at night with your laptop in your hand, but I never ever remembered seeing that resonance on the screen, even at those, those extra long focal lengths. So we worked out that it was a deck. So my bad. Um, since set out again, um, the other night and I did some uh, lucky imaging of the homunculus nebula uh, Carina, Eta Carina, the star and the uh, the great eruption and um, I was set up on the on the um, concrete out there which isn't ideal but there was no apart from a slight wind but when the wind wasn't going it was dead still so we we're back to another thing we learned uh, another thing I found out this year is my Optolong um, UVIR cut filter has some kind of mark on it. I've put on there while I'm cleaning or something. It actually had an IR uh, leak in it, which is probably I've cleaned a bit of dirt. And it's so um, I was chasing my tail with, I thought it was fire capture and corrupt files because I had satins. Um, on the outer edges of the ring system um, it was normal color but when it got close into the planet I'll put one up on the screen here it was very red so night after night I chased my tail there with that and we finally worked out it, it wasn't the um, corrupt files on fire capture and I used sharp cap and things like that so um, Another thing that sort of took our time away this year. But anyway, um, we're on top of it now. And um, one more thing I haven't done yet, which I probably will do, which you'll be able to see there. See those long, the, um, the long feet there? They're superb for keeping all the, the goodies out of um, the dirty where grass or whatever you set up on. Um, but it's very high. I'll take it close up there. And um, that also could add a little bit to um, some movement at those longer focal lengths. So um, a normal person with a, a normal scope that doesn't do planetary or, or primarily do planetary with their 24, they're not going to notice a difference. But those longer, those longer legs, the, small, the feet there, they're about 100 mil of thread. I'm going to chop them down by half, so I'll probably have 50 mil um, 
50 millimeters of um, thread or feet left, which will still be more than enough clearance. And it'll probably stop some of the um, little bit of extra resonance and, and that there. But um, apart from that, really, really happy with the scope. Um, the DSA work that you've seen just recently, that's just after I got the Starazona Nexus, the Coma Corrector, just using my um, QHY planetary camera on there. It's the biggest chip I've got at the moment. I am looking at um, like an APS-C um, sensor for um, continued work there and I'll just leave that screwed up to the, um, the Coma Corrector and the APS-C sensor will be very big and really good. It's not going to have any vignetting in the, in the sides of the field. And when this has got the Nexus in it, it's um, 1550 millimeters of focal length. With the APS-C sensor, I'm going to be able to fit basically the whole of Orion. Um, still going to be quite zoomed in, but the whole of Orion in that one shot. So um, you can imagine how much fun we'll be able to have there. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to, well, lucky imaging, but you'll be able to take those short exposures because the, um, the massive frame, uh, what is it? I think it's a 16 frames per second of that, um, that sensor is still very quick. Yeah, it's all happening. I've got some planned trips away. I've just had a week away, um, cancelled that if you've watched any of the previous videos, um, you'll understand it's been raining for the last two and a half weeks, but I had a trip to a border one, two skies at a thousand meters of altitude. Um, that's been canned and, um, because of the, um, the weather. So unfortunately we've missed that, but, uh, John's very kind and it's not the first time he's invited everyone up there to, um, have a look around on his property. It's very nice and very, very dark skies. So we are going to get up there. And another friend has offered me a uh, Bortle 3 um, Sky. Come and um, just stay with him overnight and we'll shoot some um, targets like the Sombrero Galaxy. There's still plenty of stuff up here in, um, in the south that we haven't got to yet that um, I really want to attack. So 24 inch F3.3 Hubble Optics Dob. Really happy with it. And the best is yet to come. All right, any questions, guys, or any thoughts, just leave them in the comments. And uh, as always, I'll definitely get back to you all. All right, bye for now.